Hello there, I'm Mark and today I'm going to show you 5 tips for both Affinity Designer and Affinity Photo. Those tips are universal, so each tip will work in both programs. So that's the difference here. I previously made a video about 5 tips for Designer and 5 tips for Photo. And this time we got 5 tips, but they are all universal and you can use them in both programs. All right, as you can see here on my screen, I got both programs ready. I got my Affinity Designer on the left and my Affinity Photo on the right side of my screen. So we'll be jumping between two programs today so I can prove you that you can use those tricks in both programs. Okay, first trip for today is Power Duplicate. This is a little bit different than normal duplicate because we will also carry on transformation. Not only copy the object, but also copy the last transformation. Let me show you that. I got this triangle here. If I just duplicate that holding command on my keyboard and drag here. Okay, I make a duplicate of that. If I want to repeat that action, I can use power duplicate option just simply press this shortcut command and j on mac and ctrl and j on windows let's try okay i got next copy next copy next copy as you can see the copy appear on the right side and the distance between copies are exactly the same so it's not only remember the object to copy but also keep in mind your last transformation you made all right let's try again i will drag this and also make it a little bit smaller like this. Now I'm going to use power duplicate, command J. Smaller, smaller. All right, as you can see, it's really handy picture if you need to create some kind of geometry pattern or just simply want to have exactly same distance between your copies, you can use command J to repeat a duplication. And it's not only repeat the ob copy the object, but also copy the transformation properties very very handy let's try to do something similar in affinity photo all right here i am on our artboard now on the right side of my screen i'm using affinity photo here so if i make let's say a circle like this and then i try oh maybe let's play with rotation so i'll make something more like this Ooh, already play with location let's play with rotation now okay I will apply stroke to it no fill color this time and then you can press command J our power duplicate option to make copies and they also copy the rotation I gave the first copy so we can go all around all right so that's our first tip for today that you can use in both programs power duplicate shortcut for that is command J on Mac and Control J on Windows okay my second tip is to use asset studio normally it's switch off so not many people know about this let's try to turn it on here on this designer side so i go to view then search for studio and here are assets all right over here at the very top assets now i got this asset panel pop up on the left side let's create a new empty category for ourselves here we are and now i can add my objects to asset panel so I can select them and then click here add from selection thanks to that I will be able to reuse them whatever I need I can just drag and drop them from my asset panel and add them to my next project for example a very handy way to keeping your assets all right so here's your asset panel in affinity designer let me just switch this off 
So we got more space here. Today we're using two programs, so I need to manage this interface. All right, switching of assets on designer and moving to the right side to affinity photo. We can get rid of this and let's open asset panel here. It's exactly the same process. We go to view, then search for studio and there's asset panel here. All right. So it works exactly the same way. I got picture here and I'm going to create a selection of this flower and then I will just drag this to my asset panel. So let me just use quick selection tool. I will make a rough selection so we got something to work with. All right. Almost there. Let me just deselect this area over here. I messed up a little bit, so I'll deselect that. Okay, and I think this one as well. Something's here in the center. All right, I got my rough selection ready. And now I can save this as my asset. So later on, I can just pull out this flower from my asset panel. So I can right click here. We can create new category here, but this one is totally empty. So here's our new category. And from here, we can add from selection same way. And now I got my whole picture here. So that's not what I need. Let's remove that, delete my asset. Yes. All right. What I want is I just want to drag this thing to my asset panel, not the whole image. So to do that, I will first copy and paste the flower and then I will drag the cut of flower inside. All right, I can delete the whole picture and take a look. Let's back to the main one. And now I can drag this flower out from the asset panel, whatever I need. And use this across multiple projects. Very handy if you've got like cutouts, PNGs and stuff like that. You can really easily add them to your asset panel. Okay, so that's how you can add objects to your asset panel in both Affinity Designer and also Affinity Photo. Our tip number three is quick one. You can import Adobe files. All right. When Adobe, sorry, when Affinity Designer was first introduced, it was really important that they put really good engine to open PSD and AI documents there because they were against this huge corporation as the alternative software. So they need good support and they still got the very good support for Adobe files. So you can probably open your PSD and AI files in Affinity Design and Affinity Photo without problems. You can even open Photoshop brushes in Affinity Photo, all right? So if you see like templates or brushes or assets for Adobe, there's a huge chance that you can actually use that template, use that brush in Affinity as well, all right? So keep in mind, both programs can open Adobe files. All right, our next tip is all about Export Persona. Export Persona is over here at very top. As you can see, my interface changed because I click on my export persona. From here, I can use my selection tool, go to layers first. This is my layer panel. I can select layers that I want to create slices from. So I select this, those three layers here, and then I will click here, create slices. Now in slices panel, I can see slice one, two, and three. That it's the way how I can export each image separately. I can select them and now I can pick a file format. Take a look, very long list here. So we can pick exactly what we need. Maybe PNG without background or maybe SVG for using as vector. All right. So it's really easy to create slices from your layers, from groups, from objects, and then you can export that quickly. 
all together. Now I can export all three slices with one click when I click here. So for example, if you prepare 20 different icons, just one click and you can export 20. All right, and we got something very similar on our photo side. Here, take a look. Our last persona here is also called export persona. When I click on it, the interface here is exactly the same. So I can go to layers, I can select one layer, and based on that, I can create slice. Here's the frame around this slice. And I go to slices, I can see this is over here. And then I can select a file type, file format, and just simply hit export slice. So there's export persona, exactly the same persona in both Affinity Designer and also Affinity Photo. Okay, that was our tip number four to use export persona. And tip number five look like empty slide, but no. Take a look, when I click on this artboard, I activate this artboard, I can see rulers here. To activate the ruler at the top and the left side of your screen, you can go to view and then you can show rulers, the check box here, on and off. Now disappear. If I hit combination of command R, I can turn them on again. Currently I'm working with pixels. I can right click on it and change that. So we got inches, centimeters and all of that other stuff here. You can modify that from here. And you can also click on ruler and drag out guiding line like this. On the left side as well. And then later on, you can use those guiding lines when you are designing something, right? For example, I can draw rectangle and it's kind of snapping to my guiding lines. All right, if you wanna get rid of a guiding line, simply drag it back to the ruler area. Okay, so that's the way how you can use rulers and also how you can drag guiding lines out of them. And let's take a look on the Affinity Photo side. Can I use exactly sh same shortcut? Let's give it a go. Command R. And here is my ruler. I can modify, I can modify which kind of unit I want to see. Now it's pixels. I can change to millimeters, for example. Let's try to drag guiding line from it. And here it is. We can also drag guiding lines. So we can, for example, mark the center of the image, something that will help you with your composition. And then you can snap other objects to your guiding lines. All right. So as you can see, you can use the same set of tricks in both programs. All right, guys. So today, it was a little bit overwhelming to work with both programs in the same time, but I hope you get the point. We got five techniques, five tips that you can use in both programs. Let's review them one more time before we finish. We got Power Duplicate, Common J. Then we got Asset Studio, when we can keep our asset for later. We can import Adobe files into Designer and into Photo. We can Use export persona so we can slice our design into smaller pieces and export that in just with just one click. And the last tip was about using rulers and guiding lines. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed this tutorial video. If you want to check out more Affinity content, be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel and I will see you in the next one. Bye bye.